I wanna say a huge thank you to Love and Pies for sponsoring this video and helping to make what we do possible. Love and Pies is a super cute and absolutely fun baking themed game. You play as the main character who after the mysterious disappearance of her mother and a tragic fire is left to rebuild the family cafe. Together with your friends, you investigate your mother's disappearance while maybe also finding true love along the way. The main gameplay is also really satisfying. You match ingredients to create baked goods that you serve to customers to collect tips. With the money earned and you redecorate all the unique rooms in the cafe. I've especially enjoyed the design aspect of this game, as you get to renovate your cafe and style it just the way you like it. The story is really sweet and engaging, and this is an extremely relaxing game to play. Be careful though, because once you get into this game, it's hard to put down. Give Love and Pies a go and find out for yourself. The game is free to download, just click the link in the description of this video. Remember, supporting our show sponsors helps to keep us creating new content. So download the game and let us know how you design your very own cafe. With a little bit of vision and a lot of effort, almost any place can be transformed into a home. And today we're about to meet a remarkable woman who has taken an old garage and transformed it into the most remarkable home for herself. Hi Anna, how are you? Hi Bryce. It is so lovely to meet you. Likewise, thank you. And what an amazing place you've created here. Thank you very much, yes, very special to me. Can you talk to me about what you've created here because it's so unusual what you've done. It was a matter of finding something that was a blank canvas, I suppose, because it had an old utility and a garage. And I saw the potential of having a home and making the garage into a home and using the existing buildings on the property. So that's really where it all started, I suppose. And what was it that made you decide to convert the garage into your home? Because I didn't have to start from scratch. There was something here. That was a huge plus for me. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have to start from the ground up. And it just, it just felt right, you know. It just had everything I wanted. It had amazing sea views. But it also had a bush, which is pretty cool. I just knew that it was the right place to be, really. And there's a lot going on here on the property. Can you give me an overview of what you've created here? When I bought the property, obviously it was just the garage, a little old utility up the top, very basic toilet shower, you know, typical Kiwi campsite, you know. I didn't really want to get rid of the utility. I needed a toilet and shower, obviously, because there was nothing here. And so we kept that. And then the garage, it just happened. In a lot of ways, it happened. And it was a financial thing for me as well. You know, I'd, I'd stretched myself and, and I knew that I didn't want to stretch myself anymore because then I was on my own as well. And I think for me, it was just, I liked the position of it because it was kind of off the road. And I could have put a house up the front. I could have done all that stuff. I'd be, why didn't you build on the section? Why didn't you do that? I said, well, I didn't really need to because I loved the bush and I kind of liked the privacy. So that's what sort of brought me here, really. And the exterior of it was pretty much what it is now. It was a board and batten construction. And then there was the carport. And that was kind of an area where I thought, oh, yeah, that's, that can be my garage, but not really because I couldn't really access it. But the actual construction of the garage really was a matter of deciding what I wanted to do. The outside of it for me was more about keeping that garage look just so it's a garage, so people still come down and think, oh, yeah, okay, she lives in a garage. Because people used to say that. They come down and go, oh, I live in a garage. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, people with that concept think, oh, okay. You know? Yeah, it's a bit more than a garage. It certainly is. And at the front, you've got all these gorgeous tiny homes. Can you talk to me about how that all came about? I just decided that I didn't want to build a conventional house up there. So the cottages were a financial possibility for me. And it was also part of being able to create and put them up and help be part of that. So those are B&B rentals now? Those are my Airbnbs. Yeah. But the cottages, I think now for me, have really made it where I know that I can live here. Yeah. Because I've got an income coming from them. And I love them. And it's such a fantastic spot that you've got here for it yeah, too. This it section is. is just beautiful. Is. You've got spectacular views yeah. here. I've always loved that kind of slight elevation. 
one, because you get the views, obviously. Yeah. You know. And around your home, you really have created such wonderful outdoor areas. Like this place here is just so wonderfully immersed in nature and yeah. what a place yeah. to sit and watch the sunset. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the deck was something I didn't know I, whether I could do because originally there was just a retaining wall here so we can see it runs right through there. Right. And that was it. And the trees were literally here. You didn't see blue sky. We took out a lot of trees here. There was probably about maybe 40 plus. They had black rock. They were canucas. It was hard yeah. to do that. But I knew that we would replant. But once we took all those down, then all the panga started coming up. You know, once I built this, I thought, oh, my God, the floating deck concept and looking down into pangas and things like that is amazing. Yeah, it is. I love it. Yeah. There's a few kind of interesting things here. And obviously you can see it quite like pickets. There's pickets on the front of my property that are actually originally from one of my dear friend's cafes, one of the first cafes here in Furianga. Oh, wow. Those pickets are from the front of her cafe. And that was one of my first jobs too. Right. As that is. The I love that. Winery. So, yeah, so there's little bits of things that are from history for me. Yeah. The garage here, what yep. size is it? 42 square metres. 42 square metres. Yeah. And can you talk to me about the process of converting it from a garage into a home? Well, the first thing was to take the garage door out, getting that framed up. Also, the windows, at that time, I was just going to have windows opening like that. But when you're walking past, it can be a bit of a hindrance, you know. And in some ways, having the windows that open like this is, once again, you can open the whole house up. Yeah. So that was the first part. I wanted to do it all very French, you know. I wanted French doors and I wanted... But realistically, I had an opportunity to double glaze up. It would probably would have been crazy if I hadn't. Yeah, it would have. Because, you know... It still gives you that insulation, obviously. I mean, it's very insulated because all the eco walls in there, it's a pretty pretty cosy little house. Was it already insulated before no, your project? No, no, no. So you did None all of that? Yeah. All it was was garage concrete floor and the framing. So the, the double glazing is definitely a plus. Well, from the exterior, I can see you've done such an amazing job of taking a garage and turning it into a place that just radiates with a sense of home. And I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Can we check it out? Of course. Come in. Thank you. Wow, this place is exquisite. You have such an amazing sense of style. Thank you. It's a love of recycle, I suppose. I'm a collector of a lot of, you know, things. But I generally, if I see something, I'll know that it's going to work in my home, you know, even before I get it here, to be honest. People always say to me, how do you find those things? Or how do you, and I go, I don't know. I just, I see something and I, I can see it on my home. And that's just how it's evolved. It's so funny to me because you think of a garage and a garage <laughs> is such a utilitarian space. It's sort of cold, but this place is just exceptional. You walk in here and it just emanates the sense of homeliness. It is. I've created something amazing. And yeah, you would never ever think it was a garage. No. You know, someone would have thought I would have built this as a home, but that's what it was. It was just a garage. Yeah. And this is such a lovely living room that you've created. Can you talk to me about this? The couch, I had to sort of really get custom made to fit the space. You know, I had to reconfigure things where the bedroom was going to go and, and obviously the dining area. But I want it to be still comfortable. And, you know, I can have quite a few people in here as well. So that's how I created it, really. But yes, you do have to make things fit in a tiny space. You do. You know, you have to think a little bit out of the square and think, OK, that shape's not going to fit there. As you can see, I don't have many round things in here because they take up too much room. But this is eventually what I wanted it to be, you know, the things that I love and manage to get things out of storage, et cetera, et cetera, and collect things, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Which what, I keep doing. What would you call the style of this place? How would you um, define it? Well, I don't know. I suppose some people would say it's shabby chic. Some people come in here when they've walked in here and say, oh, wow, it's so French. You know, I think it's because of the chandeliers and things like that. But I think it's a mixture. There's a little bit of cottage in here as well. So I think it's my style. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And definitely that very sort of comfortable lounge, that big sofa that you can yeah. just fall into. Yeah, I want comfort. I like to just be able to have, you know, go from there to there and, and, and feel that it all flows, which it does. I've never felt crammed or cramped or that it was too small. I've never, ever felt that in here, ever. Well, 42 square metres, that is quite a compact footprint. But one of the things that I think helps to compensate for that is you've got these lovely high ceilings. Yeah, that was a real big thing. Originally, my partner at the time, you know, wanted to put a ceiling in there, but that would have made it feel so much smaller. And once again, having the rafters up there is what it is. I love that feeling of space. Yeah. And that also 
enabled me to just do the half wall as well because you don't need to pull the wall right to the ceiling. It's me here, so I don't, I don't really have to worry about the noise, but it also gives it open feeling. And you've added onto the space with the annex as well. That was originally just a carport. And it was pretty basic, but it was a workable space because it had a concrete pad, obviously, down. And then I sort of put some shade cloth, which was, you know, because that's all I could do really to drop it off the roof. And then it had bits of ply and it was it was a bit of a tack it together look, actually, to be honest. And then over COVID, actually, is really when we turned it into what it is now, my partner now, and I did that. That's made a huge difference. It's great. So it's all lined now and it's got bats in it. And obviously it's got windows, so it's all sealed. So yeah, it's another really cool living area. And you know, I've got a dog, I've got Boo, so that's kind of his little hangout. And then obviously we've built the louver cupboards out there, so that's storage. And then charming dining area here. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a find, like most things that I have in here. It works really well because you can pull it out, but it doesn't take up all that room. I want it to still have room to move around, even mm. though I've got lots of things in here. I feel that it still feels very spacious. Yeah. And then over here we have your kitchen. And of course, your gorgeous style has just really continued in here. I love what you've done with all of this open shelving. It's sort of like a little curiosity cabinet almost. It is. Originally, I was going to do built-in proper cupboards, but I didn't want it all closed in, you know, because I've got this lots of memories on there um, there's lots of my mum and dad's bits and pieces and things from a childhood and so that was a pickup from trade me I think it was and I had no idea whether it was going to fit and it came in two pieces we picked it up put it down and it was unbelievable it was a perfect fit I mean it was insane I, I really had no idea so it's worked beautifully I love looking at everything the dinner set is something we used to have on Christmas Day every year, you know, that would come out. The picnic basket is my family picnic basket, so there's a lot of history there. That went on a lot that. of camping trips. It's kind of a visual story, you know. I think adding these elements that elicit these memories for us, that is something that makes a home a defining space for us, right? Definitely. Like that's a place that actually, when you can walk into a space and you're sort of flooded with these positive memories and the sensations of our families, like ultimately that is one of those things that can just immediately transform a blank space into something that just feels like home. I agree, definitely. And then the design of the kitchen itself, again, this is beautiful, exquisite countertops you've got here. Yeah, I was lucky once again. I mean, I wouldn't have normally been being able to have something like that and my previous partner who had a building company so that happened to be sort of like off cuts and things like that that we utilized I love it I loved all the color with the blonding and as you can see this a lot that color sort of follows through because originally I wanted to do white in the kitchen and things like that but it's a lot cooler and I found this color is warmer so mm. it gives that lovely warm feeling and then also I wanted the butler sink so they're all sort of tied in. Yeah. So, you know, it's that whole look I wanted to have. And then you've opted for open storage on this side as well? Yeah, once again, if I had cupboards, then I'd be opening the cupboards, which takes up space. It's a space thing. And well, then I can see where everything is. <laughs> you know, baskets and things like that, which is for food and storage, etc. I love this way. Absolutely. I think this is such a good way of doing it. Mm. One thing that really does stand out about this kitchen is the way that you're not hiding anything at all. Even your pots and pans, everything is on display. Yeah, I think I just like the feeling of everything being accessible. But I like display. Like, you know, I don't have a drawer for my cutlery. I mean, I'd rather have it sitting out there. I like to be able to see things that I'm working with. Yeah, so, yes. and I think that's the way that you've been able to put everything on display without it actually feeling cluttered at all. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Everything's happy in its place. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Happy in its place. Yeah, happy in its place, yep. And next door we have your bedroom, do we? Yes. Can we take a look at that? Absolutely. All right. Oh, wow, now this room feels very plush. Yes, it is. It was my little sanctuary, my little boudoir, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. You have done such an exceptional job with sourcing all of the furniture for this place. Yeah, I have to say, I mean, I've had various things over here, but this was a real treasure for me because it is actually French. And once again, it was a trade me purchase. Wow. And I actually got that at the same time that I got my table and chairs. So, yeah, very heavy. 
<laughs> but once again, it just sat in there beautifully. I didn't want to build a wardrobe. I just didn't. And the shelf was already there, so it just worked. This was really lovely. A woman actually painted this for me, which was really amazing. And once again, a tiny space. So those drawers were the perfect size. So yes, I think everything sort of worked in here. The bedsides, the bedside tables. There's still plenty of room in here. Yeah. It's sort of such a fusion of style, isn't it? Those bedside tables, it's kind of beachy. It's kind of... It is. I they, don't even know what, but it looks really cool. Yeah, they were actually from the shop that I used to manage. They are sort of beachy, but they are also shabby chic because they're sort of chipped, yeah. you know, and they've got their little decal on them, which is kind of French shabby chic -y. I like that distressed look. It's kind of that aged look, so... It works, I like it. Yeah, and you've got the functionality of the blinds for your window dressings, but then on all of the windows, you've got these wonderful soft dressings over them that really just make the space feel, well, so much softer. Yeah, once again, from the interior store that I worked in as well, I, I fell in love with those. They gave me that really lovely soft feeling. I had the blinds set and I do like the blinds, but yeah, I just love that look. It's a lovely soft look and it's me. And then you've got an ensuite style bathroom in here? Absolutely. I wanted an ensuite because once again, it's just myself here. So it wasn't really a shared bathroom as such. Yeah. So yeah, I wanted an ensuite. And I've got a you know, good shower, meter by meter shower. It's quite a good space, pretty big space. And obviously the louver sliding door, which I can close off. It gives privacy if someone else is using or whatever, but also just to give it a little bit more ambience really in the bedroom. Yeah, and again, the bathroom is just perfectly matched in style to the rest of the home. It is, it is. There's a few little things in there that I've sort of picked up. I've got a little area there where I have the toilet rolls and things like that, which is not a you know normal sort of toilet roll holder. Lots of things on my vanity, uh, dishes and things like that. You know, obviously I've got a reasonably good sink and, and drawers and things like that, but once again, that whole display thing is right through into the bathroom for me. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. And so how long have you been living here now? I have been back here now for nearly nine, coming up 10 years. Wow. Permanently now, so it's good to be here. There's been some struggles, you know, obviously, financially, where I didn't think I was going to be able to stay here, but I've just never given up. And being able to rent out the cottages now up front obviously helps with that. Oh, it definitely helps. I do have a mortgage. But I don't think I could ever replace it. I could never be able to get this property again in Whiriana. So, yeah, I'm definitely very protective of it and something that I would never want to lose. Living in a small home has really made me feel secure. It's given me that feeling that I have somewhere to lay my head, that I'm in a safe space, and it's intimate. And it just makes me feel like I'm sort of all wrapped up in this little cozy little space. I, I always walk in here and I just, I can breathe and whatever's been happening on the outside or good days, bad days or, or whatever, I come here and, and that's gone because I realise I'm always grateful for what I have here, always. Doing a conversion of a garage like this is such an unusual project. Can we talk about the cost that was involved in transforming the garage into a home? The initial build would have been around 100000 Right. Mm -hmm. And your home is so beautifully finished now. Do you have any other fun plans for the property or projects that you'd like to get stuck into? <laughs> I think I'm always going to have a project. That is kind of part of my personality, to be honest. I mean, I'm always doing something or changing something or, you know, maybe down in the bush, I might carry on down there and do a bit more work down there and put some paving down there. I'm always doing something, always doing something. But in my home, I think it's perfect for me. I think it is absolutely perfect for you as well. This is such a charming home that you've created for yourself here. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank you, Bryce. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure's all mine. When you think of a garage, you think of the absolute opposite of what Anna has created here. You think of a place which is cold, which is utilitarian, but this has been transformed into a place which elicits warmth, beauty, style. What Anna has done here is just absolutely exceptional. She has turned this place into something that truly just radiates a sensation of home. And that really is very special. <laughs>